to do is that I'm going to sing verse 1 solo, okay? I'm going to sing verse 1 solo. You all follow along. I mean, uh, you all hear as best as you can. That way you can know how to sing verse 2 and 3, okay? So when I come to verse 2, you all join me in verse 3. If some of you already know the song, hey, feel free to join me, okay? All right, the piano will be playing all three verses with me, all right? Here we go. 2-1-1. how it sounds. The cross is sent Hallelujah, hallelujah, defying every blast. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The winds of
prayer. <coughs> Brother Chris, can you open up the service today with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for getting everybody here on time and everything in order. We hope everybody's having a good week since the last Sunday. I know we're all going through trials and errors and we're all overcoming and some things Amen. are just a little harder to overcome than others, you know, yeah, but we know you're there helping stuff. us along the way. That's good. Uh, we ask that you bless this preaching today, Lord Father. A lot of us got a lot of things going on in the world, and we are very thankful that we are able to have time to come here and worship. Yeah, amen. Yeah, Lord yeah, amen. Father, when a lot of the world does yes. not have that opportunity or privilege. No. Um, thank you for being with us every step of the day, and we know this sermon today is going to be just amazing and eye-opening and heart-touching, so... I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated. All right, for time's sake, we're, uh, we're going to call it a day. All right, so if uh, Brother uh, Tom can come forward and give the announcements, all right? Yes, sir. All right, so first things first, I'm going to tell us our uh, memory verses. It's going to be, please turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let me turn over there as well. These are all really good verses, so don't count them out. First Thessalonians chapter four, and we're gonna we're gonna memorize verses thirteen to fourteen. And the Bible says, "But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him." I think uh, I was just listening to preaching by Pastor Peacock this morning, and uh, one thing he said was the the only thing you can do to comfort somebody when their loved ones have passed, especially if they're saved, is give them the promise that God gave us. Amen. So mm -hmm. that's good. Remember that um, we gotta hope that nobody else has, because nobody else knows where their dead ones are going. That's right. Amen. So, that's some hope for today. Um, next week we're gonna have street preaching at 10 a.m. We're gonna meet at church at the same place, 1375 Lafayette Street again. Uh, so we're not going to be in this conference room, so please don't come here. Um, we're going to meet together. We're going to, if you have food, we're going to put it in the fridge in the, at church, and we're going to drive over to San Tomas Expressway. We're going to be doing some street preaching. Um, Wednesday Bible study and discipleship times are as usual. It's at the same building. Uh, 7 p.m. for discipleship, and Bible study starts at 8. Uh, monthly fellowship will be this month. Uh, it's going to be on October 27th, and the location and time will be announced shortly. We will let you know well in advance so that you guys can plan. Um, so here I have a few things to say about the volunteer sheet for the revival. Um, we only have a couple slots missing. I really thank everybody for volunteering. Mm -hmm. So we just ideally we want one person per day per activity and uh, as, since we have a lot of people I see a lot of people have already signed up so anybody else who can volunteer please sign up because if we have enough people to where it doesn't have to be like a burden for one person to take care of multiple things in one day or throughout the week. So um, this, I'm going to pass this around. If you can, obviously, Lord willing, you can make it and help us out. Just remember, it is a commitment. Uh, we do need the people there. It'll be kind of a disaster if uh, something falls through. Um, but I believe the Lord will provide. We'll be okay. And for the last thing we're going to do, we're going to actually, I, I know it's been a long set <coughs> of announcements, but we're going to have a special with me, Brother Jack, Sean, and Pastor one day when heaven was filled with his praises one day when sin was as black as could be jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he living he loved me dying he saved me yeah amen buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day one day they left him alone in the garden one day he rested from suffering free. Angels came down o'er his tomb to keep vigil. Hope of the hopeless, my Savior is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Amen. Rising he justified. Freely forever, one
one day he's coming, O oh, glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose, over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Yeah, praise God! Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, O oh, glorious day. Woo, nice. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glory will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one's bringing. Glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. Yep. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, O oh, glorious day. So we're going to take up the Lord's offering. Okay, so if uh, Brother Sean, he can come forward, and then come take the offering over here, and ask God's blessing upon the church service as a word, with the word of prayer as well. <coughs> all right, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for bringing us together, Father. doesn't matter Amen. where it is. All that matters yeah. is that there's Amen. folks in this uh, Laodicean day and age, 2018, that still gather. Yes, Lord right. God, Amen. all around yeah. this world, Father, <coughs> Um, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yeah. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless the offering today. I pray that it would be given cheerfully uh, with the right heart behind it, Lord God. doesn't matter how much it is. I pray that you would bless it for your will, for your perfect will, for souls to get yeah. saved, yes. for missionaries. We just got done uh, hearing about missionaries that we're supporting that are on the battlefield yes. trying to get souls yes. saved, yeah. Father yeah. God. I pray that you would use it to, um, yes. to yes. encourage and support even more missionaries, yes. Father. And I pray, Lord God, that you would have us to be that Philadelphian church in the Laodicean age. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 17, please. Deuteronomy chapter 17, and we will read verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 17, we will read verse 1. Thank you so much for coming to church today. Uh, this is a temporary location. I appreciate you guys still coming to church. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's about God. It's not about That's a right. permanent amen. spot. That's yeah. Right. yeah, amen. It's about God. Amen. amen. All right, so we'll be back uh, next Sunday. All right, so Deuteronomy chapter 17. You will read verse 1, please. Verse 1 of Deuteronomy chapter 17. Okay. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness. For that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Bible likens a Christian life in Romans chapter 12 as a living sacrifice. So you got to realize that your very living, your service to the Lord is a sacrifice on the altar every day. As you come forward to God and symbolically speaking, offer up that lamb to God. You got to realize this, when you offer up that lamb of service to the Lord, if there is any blemish in it, they wanted a perfect lamb. God wanted a perfect lamb. If there was any blemish in it, the Bible says right here, that is an abomination. I believe that the number one problem with Laodicean Christians today 
is that they do go to church. They do try to worship God in their own way. Some of them might give lip service that they love Jesus, but somewhere in their heart they do. A lot of people, they'll even be trying to do good things for the Lord. But they think that they can serve God while there is blemish in their life. They think they can go to church while there is blemish in their life. They think they can do soul winning while there is blemish in their life. They think that they can tithe on the offering plate, thinking that's like an indulgence that can pay off their sin, that can pay off their blemish because of some kind of money or deed that they've given to the Lord. Some of you people think that because of all the good things that you did for the Lord, that will make up for any bad thing that you did in your life. You think that your prayer life will make up for it? You think that your church attendance can make up for it? Do you think that your Bible reading can make up for it? Do you think that your work among the church, well, I'm a deacon, well, I'm a Sunday school teacher, well, I help out the pastor with a lot of things in the church, if there is blemish, then God sees that as abomination. If God sees blemish in San Jose Bible Baptist Church, it doesn't matter how many hundreds of souls that we may have led to Jesus Christ's That's salvation right. through visitation, street mm-hmm. preaching, and online, mm-hmm. and through person to person in our own time. It doesn't matter about the thousands of tracts we passed out. Blemish in the church, that is an abomination. Mm-hmm. Does God see abomination in San Jose Bible Baptist Church today? My title is four words. That is an abomination. Let's pray. God, my Father, please wash away my sins with your precious and most holy blood. I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill within me. I pray, Heavenly Father, that people will be blessed by the sermon rather than offended. I also want to pray that you will be glorified and that Gene Kim will be put aside. I pray that it will not be my flesh, what I want, what I'm thinking, that would be saying the words, but purely of... God, divine, Holy Spirit, unction that will guide through me, and may it be purely from thee and not from me. God, this is your sermon, not mine. Put me out of the way. I pray that uh, the people online, the people in here, and that the Gene Kim, everything will be put aside, and you'll take full control. You get the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My first point is dissension. Dissension. Are you 100% right? in any part of rebellious attitude that you may have had, in any fights that you may have had in the church, of having some kind of accusation in your heart towards somebody else, a critical attitude inside your mind, critiquing and complaining and whining and finding problems, or certain doctrines that you hear, you go, well, I disagree with that. Is there some sort of sin, some sort of blemish, or are you 100% right in that? you got to say before you have a critical mindset and critiquing something, I'm 100% right with the Lord, with a clean conscience, without any guilt whatsoever when I think or when I say it that way. Can you say that with uh, the teaching when you are instructed to do something or when you fellowship with one another? Especially online, it is horrendously mad. It is horrendously insane. They don't look at their heart. All they look at is what they want in their head, what they're critiquing in their mind. But God, what He wants is the heart more than the head. And you've got to realize that the only way the head can function right is if your heart is right with God first. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10 says, Only by pride. You hear that? God never said humility. He said only, only by pride cometh contention. Mm. See, why did contention come out? Is it a sign of humility or contention? Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to say tell you what to do or judge you or rebuke you, but, uh, you know, oh, wait, don't give me that pretense of humility within you. Is it pride within you? Mm. Only by pride cometh contention. That's true. But with the well-advised is wisdom. Look, I don't have any guilt whatsoever. Whenever I preach or teach something, something that uh, somebody might say, well, I don't know about that. No, before I teach something, and this is what I train my disciples, be very careful what you say, because guess what? We're online too. And they are very nitpicky about it. Anything that I have preached or taught, I don't have regrets about it on being anything wrong. 
I yeah. don't. So I believe in pointing out people's sin, in preaching, and rebuking, and judging. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm doing it right now, right? Yeah. I'm judging you for judging, so to speak. Yeah. So, see, you got to realize this. I totally understand that. But I can do that feeling 100% right with God. Mm. I'm simply asking you. I'm not accusing you of being prideful. I'm only accusing you of being prideful if, if you don't feel 100% right with God. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, on what you just really said. Good. Mm. With, with a clean conscience at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, I just know I'm right and, okay, you know enough where God can judge you at the judgment seat of Christ and there's no sin in you, no blemish within you. If there is blemish, then what is that? Abomination in the eyes of God. Abomination. Well, I'm 90% right. Hush your mouth. Hush your mouth. You're online, fool. Hush your mouth. I know I feel I'm right. Hush your mouth. It doesn't matter if you're 90% right. Hush your mouth about that. You got to realize this is that because God, He wants you to be 100% right. 100% right yeah. in what you do for Him. So before you bring up dissension within the church, are you 100% right? To ignore what you did wrong in the dissension? It's so easy. Look, I've been through churches all my life. Okay? I've been preaching against people's sin all my life critiquing and rebuking false pastors all my life, went through church dissensions all my life, and you know what you're going to feel in your flesh? And don't say it doesn't work with you, because it does with me when I've been through it many years. In your flesh, you tend to see what the other person is wrong about, and that's all your flesh in sensing at the heat of the moment when you're in the dissension. Within a rebellion. That's good. Within a fight. When you're accusing. When you have a critical mindset, when there comes an abstract doctrine where you just fuss about the most silly things ever. See, that's flesh. That's not spirit. Can you say that's 100% Holy Spirit, God leading you? If not, that is an abomination in the eyes of God. In Titus chapter 3, verses 9 through 11, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions. See that? It's said to avoid. It's said to avoid. Avoid. And strivings about the law. For they are what? Unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Knowing that he that is such subverted and sinneth. Being condemned of himself. So you know what heretics do? I'll tell you what heretics do. Heretics what they would like to do. Is that all they're thinking about is themselves. And when they think about themselves they want to bring up some kind of doctrine. They'll bring some kind of dissension within the church. And hey, it does not have to be a doctrine. It can be any personality, spiritual, daily, everyday conversation, and character, etc. It does not have to be doctrine. And it does not even have to be your everyday living either, or your doctrine. It could be everything on anything that relates to you. you got to realize this, is that anything that would bring dissension... The verse says, they are what? Unprofitable and vain. Are you 100% right to have your dissension bring no profit and become vain? You know what uh, dissension does? It, it does nothing. It doesn't bring more good to the church. It doesn't make us stronger and grow bigger as a church. It doesn't make us fellowship even more sweetly. It does not bring that unity. You know what it does? It's vanity. It's just nothing. All it was was hot air. And not only that, it brought no profit. Mm. Profit. You know what the point of fellowship is? Do you know what the point of coming to church is? Do you know what the point of soul winning together and hearing the preaching of the Word of God and doing things together, working together, what it's supposed to do? Profit. Profit one another. It is not supposed to bring. Dissension will bring no profit. No profit. You know what it does? It just makes the church smaller, not bigger. Mm. You know what it does? It makes people not being able to function together in helping each other out with busy and working situations. When there's a crisis in the church, we can't depend upon the person to take care of the crisis. That's the problem with dissension in the church. It doesn't bring any profit. Can one gain a blessing by what you said? in accusing, in fighting, 
and having a rebellious attitude and being critical and talking about some abstract doctrine? Does it uh, bring a blessing? Do you gain a blessing out of it? I don't think so. With throughout my past uh, years in church, most of my life, it just brings heartache. And I just wish that, man, I just wish it's over with. It's done. It's gone. I want to get back to singing again. I want to get back to fellowshipping again. I want to get back to soul winning again, street preaching, always having the joy of the Lord once more with each other again. I want that out of the way. I want dissension out of the way. I just want to get back Amen. in worshiping, being happy together. Amen. Did we see dissension when we had big revival meetings? Did we see dissension when we started out as a church? Did we see dissension when we were with that camaraderie in street preaching. Did we see dissension or did we see joy and passion and power? Yeah, amen. See, what do you want in your life? That brings profit when contention is dropped. Does it support the church when you're accusing, when you have a rebellious attitude, when there's a critical mindset, when it comes to abstract doctrine? Does that support the church or does it burden it? Does it bring more fruit or does it steal? Does it destroy the fruit? How long has the church planted and worked hard in producing fruit. And then we just have to stomp all over the fruits once more. Right when you grew the fruit, right when you worked hard, all those uh, months and years and times of praying, reading the Bible, encouraging one another, trying to get people into church, trying to get people involved in soul winning. What happened? My second point is drop. Drop. Oh, it's just going to get better and better, trust me. It's going to get Give better and better. It's going to get better and better. Amen. Are you 100% right when you, when you get tired? And tiredness is the excuse where you drop behind your duty. Mm. Are you 100% right when you're so busy that you're confident to drop behind? Are you 100% right before you pour out an excuse, well, I can't do that thing because are you 100% right for doing that? And then you can drop the duty. You can shirk the duty. Are you 100% right for dropping behind in trying to keep the camaraderie, trying to keep the church functioning, volunteering for the duties and all that? Are you 100% right to drop behind in keeping the church uplifted, edified, and helping out? Are you 100% right? If not, four words. That is an abomination. Abomination in the eyes of God. Whoa, preacher. You're laying it on today. Yes, sir. Because in this sermon, I'm just going to make everyone feel guilty that the pastor will hey, feel guilty of this God. Oh, I'm going to make sure that everybody across the earth will make sure that they feel guilty in this good. sermon. Yeah, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Glory yeah, to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's an abomination. Let's get rid of blemishes. Amen. Yeah, yeah, amen. That's good. Haggai chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Like the children of Israel who waste God's house by thinking it's not time to build yet. It's not time to build yet. Christians are following the same example in wasting the opportunities that God has given to us and saying, it's not time yet. So that's the reason why you're not uh, getting involved in the church. That's good. the reason why that you have not improved your spiritual walk. That's the reason why that you weren't able to win a soul yet. That's the reason why you weren't able to give to the Lord yet. That's the reason why you weren't able to volunteer yet. You know why? Everyone says this, it's not time yet. That's good, brother. It's not time yet. And when you, every time you say it's not time, you waste opportunity. Mm, yeah. You got to realize opportunity for the Lord to fashion and mold and use you. I'm telling you this because... I know this more than anybody. Why? Because I started the ministry at a very early age. And guess what? There are pastors out there who started the ministry earlier than me. So I'm not the only one. But I know that they can be a witness to me. Witness with me. That when you start to serve God really early, then the Lord, you know, He starts to fashion and mold you. And because He can fashion and mold you, that's the reason why I am able to preach and teach in this 
particular manner where people can get a blessing. Why? Because it's all Gene Kim? No! It's because it's all God Almighty, yeah. and the only way He can move mm -hmm. is if I start saying, now's the time. Now's mm. the time. Yeah, amen. Well, when I did that, pastors, things started to get harder for me. Yeah, you know why? Because God's molding you. That's the opportunity you're wasting. Mm. God is molding you and using you. And don't deny it. I, I got people in this church, once they start to say, Lord, I'm going to serve you, how many of you just got trashed by the devil? How many yeah, of amen. you had God trying to fashion and mold you? How many... How much have you seen God working in your life and you saw something that you know it had to be God and it can't be just something uh, earthly or yourself? Yeah, amen. See, you got to realize this is that you got to get involved because in each thing you drop behind, was that 100% right? Was that 100% right when you were tired? When you were busy? Oh, I can't do it because when you make the excuse, are you 100% right? Be careful now. Be careful. Let me give you a sobering thought. James 4.14, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. If I ask you, are you ready to die, having accomplished 100% in your life? I'm very certain that nearly everybody would likely say no. Yeah. Amen. Have you accomplished 100% in your life? Are you ready to die having accomplished 100% for God? You might say no. Well, shouldn't that, shouldn't that self-admission prove to you, that confession out of your mouth, you even admit it yourself, that you're not 100% right with God when you drop behind? Mm. In that particular thing, you realized, huh, when I said, uh, if I was ready to die, I have not accomplished 100% for God, why did you say that? Because you know what you dropped behind. Yeah. You know the particular thing that the Holy Spirit kept nudging on your heart, but you kept making excuses for it. You let busyness interfere. You kept being tired about it and not doing it. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. You got to realize that thing has to be put aside and crucified at the cross at Calvary. And you got to realize that, look, I know that what I dropped behind was not 100, not 90, 100%, 100% right with God. Right with God. And that particular thing that you thought of, I'm not ready to die having accomplished 100%. For God. Okay, why? Why? Tell me. Don't just say it. Why? Then give the then you know. You know. Oh, you know. Don't say no, I don't know. Oh no, you know. You know what it is. I ain't gonna tell you. It's gonna be you and the Holy Ghost, that's why. Mm. Only you and the Holy Ghost will know. Yeah. Pastor's not a mind reader. Yeah. And you don't know me either. Alright? So don't mind read me either. <laughs> <laughs> See this? We're a church that strives, including the pastor himself, including the pastor himself, in having no blemish. Yeah, yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what? That is a what? Abomination. Abomination. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, yeah. thou shalt be saved. <laughs> yeah. amen. A lot amen. of people don't want to confess it because what? It bites. Yeah. It hurts. Amen. All right, can we go to the next point, preacher? Gladly. I want to get this over with more than you did. That's why I delay the church service. I just want to make the sermon short. I want to get out of here. Yeah. You might say, well, I ain't coming back to church again. I, uh, guess what? You might not see me next Sunday either. I might not come back to church again. Come on, preacher. Yeah, amen. Amen. Then why are you preaching this, pastor? Because if I don't preach this the way Jesus wants me to, he's going to send lightning from heaven. Yeah, amen. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just going to have to preach the it like this. Council, amen. Yeah, amen. All right, my third point. Okay, we're halfway. That's the good news. <laughs> my third point is doings. 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 Are you 100% right in what you do for the Lord? In all your actions. See, here's the thing with people that they fail to understand. 
they don't check themselves that what they have in their social network, for example, I'm going to go that extreme because I realize that social networks, it shows even the most private things in your life. But social networks is very telling to me. It shows all the things that you have in your life, even the private things. But when it's very telling on what other Bible believers can see in your social network, can you be 100% sure that that is right with God? If you're not 100% sure, then that is a what? Abomination. What you're talking about uh, certain television shows and games and amen and amen. Look, come on, give me the list now. You know what it is. I don't have to tell you. Videos that you're watching, the games that you're playing, the music that you're listening to, the conversations that you have, to the very dressing that you wear, all the way to the core of your very thought. Thought. Did you hear what I just said? Thought. Thought. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, it's not like you can say that it's really a sin. Uh, okay, can you say it's really right? 100% right? You know what people see? People see is, well, I don't see how that's really wrong. And like Dr. Upman once said, that's the problem, Solomon. You've got to see what's right with it. What's right with it, not what's wrong with it. See, that's the problem with people. They don't want to spoke. They're looking at the wrong focus. They've got to look at holiness perfection what yeah, is right and when you see true. that oh trust me everything's going to clean off after that not what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong it's got to be what's right and when you see what's right then you realize that's not 100 percent. did you hear what i said 100 percent right no blemish no blemish if there is a blemish on your altar of sacrifice in that thought line when you are here in church hearing the preaching right now, on, hearing the preaching right now, and that thought came up in your mind that is not 100% right, abomination Amen. in the Amen. eyes of God. What you have in the house, abomination. What you have in your social network, abomination. What you have in your life, abomination in the eyes of God. To the very conversation and manner, abomination. Your doings, your very doings. Because Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14 reads, For God shall bring every work into judgment. Yeah. Every work. We don't see that seriously, do we? Every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. How many times have we heard this over and over again, this verse? That God will judge for every word that was spoken. Every thought that we conjured up in our minds. Every feeling that the flesh has felt. And every action that we performed. He will check each and every one of them. And say, is that good? Is that evil? Well, Lord, I don't know if it's that's evil. Okay, let's see if it's good. That's good, mm, brother. Yeah. good or That's evil, good. right and wrong. That's it, right or wrong, good and evil. What are you? Uh, th th this liberal relativistic world has Lord. influenced your mind and brainwashed you that you're like, nope, nope, no, 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 no. Good or evil? Yeah. Mm. Good or evil? Good or evil? If that particular thing was evil, then that means, okay, think about it. You don't see the consequence to you. Can you say that that is good if you can't? then what will that be to God if it's not 100% right? Then if he counts that as evil, then what does he have to do? What does he have to do? Oh, it's okay, I understand. No, he has to go like that. He has to chastise you back into place. That's not right. That's not right. You keep touching that thing and God's like, keep slapping that hand. And you're like, well, I don't see anything wrong about it, wrong about it. Look what's right. Look what's right. And... You don't get it every time he slaps you. And you always make up your mind that what you're doing is not evil, it's not evil. Okay, is it 100% right? What you watch, what you're listening to, your, your conversation, what you're saying, and what you're thinking in your mind. And look at this. Everything that you have decorated in your house and in your body, is it 100% right? And if it's not, then does God have to judge that? Does he have to judge it? 
Yes. Bring every, every, every work into judgment. Some people might say, oh, Pastor, you're just too holy. <laughs> it's better to be too holy than too wrong. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Better to be more right than wrong. Yeah. Because the farther I, wait, I get away from God's judgment, the more I'll be in better shape than you. <laughs> Trust me. And look, folks, I am not saying that I'm the most holy person in the room. If I am, we're in trouble. <laughs> this whole church is in trouble. I hope there's someone better than me out there in this room. You got to realize that you got to think before you actually, before, before you say and do and think something. Because God has to judge your doings. And see if it's 100% right. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, When therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the what? Glory of God. You know what solved a lot of my problems? I'll tell you what solved a lot of my problems. What solved a lot of my problems is, as one preacher said, and that really helped me immensely, before you listen to something, before you say something, before you joke about something, play a certain kind of sport and watch something. Make sure you tell the Lord, this is done to glorify you, Lord. Yeah, that's good. And trust me, when you do that, mm -hmm. you will know if it's right or wrong after Amen. that. When I done that, man, oh man, the filter just went on. And that filter just cleaned up a lot of the stuff that I was listening, that I was watching, that I was dressing, that I had in my, uh, um, in my social, I don't have a social network, but in my internet, and uh, in my uh, house, in my car. You got to realize this, is that all this stuff, you got to realize that you got to say, this is done to glorify you, God. Yes, sir. It's done to glorify Amen. you. Amen. If you don't, if you can't say that, then why are you unwilling to say that to the Lord? Yep. Why That's are right. you unwilling to That's say, right. this is done to glorify you, God? Because that is a confession yeah. out of your heart. Your heart is screaming, but your mouth stubbornly closes Amen. and refuses Preach to that. say, Amen. that is an abomination. That's why. You, you refuse to admit that. You refuse to realize that is wrong. That is wrong. Can you jump to the next point? Yep. But I don't know if that will make it any better. The fourth point <laughs> on, is preacher. demeanor. Demeanor. Thankfully, this is our last point. Here's something that I realized is that um, I understand that, that we all have different personalities and characters. And I thought of it that way when I first pastored a church. But you got to realize this. When you start to get involved with more people in your life, and especially ministering to people, serving others more than yourself, you're going to realize that the personality and the character you have, it may not be sin, because we're not talking about that. Remember, we're talking about what is 100% right. And when you go through that, then you'll realize what you did was wrong. And then I realized that the way that I was doing things as a pastor, that my demeanor had to change a lot. Oh, you compromising? No, I. when it contradicts the Bible, then I compromise. Then I sin. But you know what I believe? I believe in polishing. I believe in humbling myself. I believe in humbling myself rather than be pridefully stubborn about it. Amen, and realize you. that, hey, my demeanor, if anything, in my mannerism, personality, and character, it does not bring a blessing to other people, then it's not right. That's good. Amen. Amen. How is your demeanor like? There are some, you got to understand this, some, I have not seen many Bible believers who had such weak demeanor before. They don't know their manners. There are Bible believers that I know of that are just very careless. You can't, you got to realize this, especially when we're doing like tech stuff, that's when we're like really careful, right? Something like that requires a lot of caution and carefulness. You got to realize that coming to church requires a lot of caution and carefulness. You got to realize that uh, thinking about the duties that you're supposed to do and helping out other people, you can't be careless about it. You got to be careful. 
You can't have somebody else piggyback from you and take care of the problem for you. You've got to be careful in everything that you do. What about forgetfulness? Oh, man, that was a, that's a problem that I'm still working on, man. I'm still working on. And that's the reason why I would have notes all over my table. That's the reason why that my brain cells start to die out even more and I, can't, I lost common sense because I have a bunch of schedules in here. I thought it was doctrine, Pastor. Yeah, half of it is doctrine, but half of it is schedule. <laughs> Maybe I should give up the schedule thing more. But you've got to realize this is that forgetfulness, I had to change that attitude. And, and you know what? You know what gives me more extra work? Is that if somebody in the church forgets something, and I have to remind that person, and then I have to remind ten people about that. So that means I got ten more things on my schedule, and hopefully those people can take care of that for me. See, forgetfulness, you got to realize that thing has to be fixed. Is that 100% right to forget? Is it 100% right to forget? Is it 100% right to be careless? Is it? Is it? I didn't say sin. Is it 100% right? Your manners. How are your manners like? Sometimes people, you got to learn how you got to learn how to be polite. Sometimes you got to learn how to sit right and how to eat right. Sometimes you got to have the common sense when you're conversing around the table what to say and what not to say. Sometimes people who don't know what to say, you got to realize can bring a heavy burden in the church. You got to realize you're not uh, well that's just me. No, you're not the weirdo you. Okay? You're around people now. That's You're not good, by yourself good. locked up inside yeah, the house. Good, You're around hey. people now. And you got to realize <laughs> that, okay, this kind of stuff that I'm saying is just bringing a weird vibe in the atmosphere and not being a blessing to people. You've got to fix your manners. Be aware with what you say. Talkative. Sometimes people talk too much, man. If you talk more than the pastor, you're talking a lot. Okay? <laughs> Because the reason why the, talk, the pastor would talk more than you is because the pastor, all the time, he would try to instruct and guide. And when he goes at, you know how long it would take in the drawing board, okay? So if you talk more than the pastor, you got problems, man, trust me. <laughs> Talking, that is, is that 100% right to be talkative? Yada, 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 yada. Come on. That demeanor's got to be fixed. Maybe some of you want to go back to the previous points now, right after this? Preach. What about your attitude toward other people? you got to realize this, is that, oh, well, you know, I'm a Bible believer, I'm firm all the way. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, that kind of attitude can become a jerk and can become a burden, and you'll just drive away people from church. That's right. You'll just make people think that Bible-believing Christians have no love and care in their hearts. you got to realize, how is your attitude toward other people? I know you come in, you're tired, you're busy, life is horrible, okay? I know you're the only one that's suffering more than anybody in the room, okay? You're suffering more than the Apostle Paul, okay? I get it. You suffer oh, more than on. the pastor, you suffer more than the Sunday school teachers, you suffer more than the people helping out in the church. I know you are suffering the most, okay? But you can't bring that kind of attitude into the church and lay it off on other people. you got to put that Amen. smile on Good your face brother. and make everybody feel welcome. Show love when they don't show love to you. Yeah. Talk to them when they don't talk to you. you Fellowship. you got to learn to Amen. do that. That's you know good. why? I had to do that. All right? God is my witness. The people here is my witness ever since I was at the beginning of the church. I mean, I was tired. I was worn out. They would see the bag in my eyes. But I can't lose the smile. I can't lose the right attitude toward people. Mm -hmm. You've got to realize that even though we're so busy, we're so preoccupied, we're tired, we're, we're hit hard by the devil, you've got to have a right attitude. Here's another thing. You know one thing I notice about Bible believers? Here's one thing I notice. They lack attention. They have, a t they have attention deficit disorder sometimes. You gotta realize this is that you gotta realize that you gotta start paying attention to what people say. You gotta realize that sometimes people are saying something that you're not thinking about. Okay? Now, you know why that's really hard for me? You're kidding, Pastor. You yeah, you know why that's really hard for me? Because I got a hundred things running around in my brain cells right now. Like that. So then I have to force in room, make an apartment room right over here in Silicon Valley head right here. Uh, rent an apartment room right here, $2,000 a month, and make a small little room right here of paying attention. <laughs> it's an expensive price to pay. 
A lot of sacrifice on my part. But this is Silicon Valley brain right here, and I have to force him room somehow. That's good, brother. Hey, so I'm man. trying to make good him stuff. room right here where, hey, keep your ear open on paying attention. Some people have an attention problem. And, uh, yeah, here I'm going to go. I'm going to lose people, but this I'm trying to be, on, help brother. all of you out. Okay? Preach, come on. That's the reason why you ended up in our church, because you lack such attention in hearing the word of God and preaching. You have to have some graphic arts. You have to have someone draw it on you. You have to have a catchy title. You have to have something that would pull you in with drama. You have to have the preacher's tone of voice go like this so that you can finally pay attention. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 That felt great. Amen. <laughs> that felt great. Amen. So you got to realize this. I don't care if there's a preacher who preached a boring sermon, something you already heard, something like, oh, I heard this before. Ah, is that 100% right, that attitude? No. Nope. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt what? Good manners. God wants good manners. That's the Bible believer. you got to have good manners. God doesn't want anything that corrupt, corrupts good manners. If it does, that's a sin. So don't be careless about your surroundings. Huh? Pay attention. Perform your duty responsibly and perfectly. Don't shirk it off and don't be forgetful. Keep in mind and remember what you're supposed to do and don't have somebody piggyback off of you. Have a nice attitude toward people, please. All right? The pastor just offended people. You don't need to increase the offense ten times more. Okay? When the pastor starts kicking, it's t you gotta, uh, you got to hold their hand and say, Oh, it's okay. Everything's all right. you got to start doing that. <laughs> yeah. The pastor kicked their behind. Now you got to pat them on the head and say, It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Right? You know, when dad spanks, spanks me, you know? What happened? Run to mom. Mom goes, oh, it's okay, it's okay. And then my mom, when she spanks me, I run to dad. And dad's like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> and then when mom spanks me, I run to my dad. My dad spanks me. <laughs> and then I run to Jesus Christ and he pats my head. It's okay. Amen. <laughs> you have a nice attitude toward other people. You've got to pay attention to what people say. Come on, be polite, huh, please? Please. Hey, be amen. polite, please. <clears throat> When you're preaching the Word of God, you're preaching the Word of God, see? And God's Word does not return void. And then everything in your life after that has to be politeness. You've got to be polite. You can't be like a jerk. Don't say anything improper and show some respect toward other people. Oh, well, you know, uh, that person's wrong in here and there and there and there. You know what's so, what I realized? Okay, you might have a legitimate point, but I realize this. People who talk that way respect more on themselves rather than other people. That's one thing I learned. You have a tendency to respect yourself more than other people. So you probably have a legitimate point. But it doesn't change that fact that once time passes by, and especially in my life when I saw that, I respected more on myself than other people around me. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 18, it says, For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God, and it doesn't end there like at the NIV. It continues, and approved of men. You know what Bible believers have a bad habit of doing? Which Come is on, why we have bad demeanor. Come on. We think about, well, it's not a sin against God. It's not a sin against God. But God wants you not to only think about Him. He also wants you to think about... Others. He didn't drop to one commandment. The first commandment, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. He didn't stop right there. He put another one. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Upon these two, not one. Don't be NIV on me. Don't go NIV on me. You a Bible believer. You King James only, right? Amen. You believe everywhere, right? Amen. Okay, then add it in there. Upon these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets, Jesus said. All the laws and prophets. When you think about God and others, and trust me, when you do these two things, your world changes. Your viewpoint changes. Because you're so used to thinking about Amen. yourself, yourself, yourself. Look, you might have a legitimate point there. You might have a good argument right there. But you know what? God, He does not want to see, oh, you know, how much you're arguing on what's correct. 
He wants to see how much your heart is correct in being humble, in submitting to God and to others, and where you are on the ground, and God and others are on top of you. And you got to realize this, you're not pleasing God, you're not acceptable to God when you're not being approved of others. you got to realize that. So you got to realize that you have to, uh, you have to please God, and if you're going to please God, naturally what should come out of your heart is trying to please others. Oh, but what if they sin? What if they... Hey, come on. Come on. Look, do, did I say that you should please them when it comes to sin? Did I say that you should please them when it comes to heresy? I never said that. Okay? But you got to realize this, is that anything else that is 100% blatant sin, blatant heresy, you've got to learn to think about others. Amen. That would work on your manners. Well, I don't think so. Uh, no wonder you're all alone. See, no wonder people don't have a good time talking to you. No wonder people, they try to avoid you. Oh, why didn't you call me? Hey, you know why? Oh, because you're going to say this. You're going to do that. You're going to do this. See, think about your manners. People will avoid you, you got to understand. And you'll be all alone. That's why the funny thing, I realize this now, <laughs> the funny thing is that when people start to get married and when they start to have children, that's when they start being selfless and start to realize a lot of themselves that they try to legitimize and say that's right, that's right, they fix it automatically. Oh, it's very strange when it comes to marriage and when you have children, that's when you realize what you're doing, you can't be the same as before and that a lot has to be fixed. I mean, do people find it approvable when you forget things, when you're careless, when you lack manners, when you're talkative? How about your attitude toward them? Do they approve of it? How about when you don't pay attention? Do they approve of it? If not, you don't want to say this, that is an abomination. A man was doing his normal routine as a railway brakeman when all of a sudden a spider bit him on the little tip of his middle finger. He only felt a brief shot of pain and didn't think it was a big deal. I could shake it off. To his horror, he later saw his finger infected his whole hand and then to his arm to three times the normal size. He went to the Sedalia, Missouri hospital and the doctors discovered he was bitten by a tarantula. <laughs> The doctors amputated the little middle finger, but the wound refused to heal. Then, little by little, they amputated a little more, till it reached his entire hand. Hmm. And guess what? Oh, that it didn't stop right there. Soon it reached 29 amputations, with four months of hospital treatment. Hmm. What's your point here, preacher? I'll tell you what the point is. Well, it's not sin, it's not sin. Oh, the flesh, the devil, is paying attention. The world is paying attention. Ah, okay. Then I can use that to lead you down towards something that will be sin eventually. That'll be halfway towards sin. That's good. Though. And then two-thirds towards sin, That's and good. then sin. And when you reach sin, you're just so blinded that you keep justifying everything on what you do. And you keep making excuses around it, and you don't get that right with God. Christians don't think it's a big deal when they do a particular thing that may not be fully 100% right. But you know what God said? This should be very plain. Why do you keep saying it's sin, it's sin, if it's not 100% right, Pastor? Why do you put it that way? Romans 14, 23. Whatsoever is not a faith is what? Sin. 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 You can't put 100% certainty on that. That's not faith. And God says, if you're not sure, then don't do it. Don't even do it. Don't debate about it. Don't figure out ways around it. Best advice, just don't do it. Don't do it. Because God says He automatically counts as sin. And you know what sin does? If that is considered sin, I didn't call it sin. The Bible called it sin. Did it? Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. If it's not 100% certainty, it's sin. Yes? If you're going to take God at His word, then what did James 1, 
15 said about sin. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth what? Death. Death. It will kill you one day. How do you know that, Pastor? Because it happened to me. Something that I thought was not really wrong. And then the Lord showed me something where it really kicked me. Thankfully, it didn't drop me dead. <laughs> but it kicked me, and I realized, okay, God, I got the point. I'm going to back off 100 miles. And then I backed off and I never did those things again. And I'm not talking about really wicked things your pastor is doing you, or sinful things. I'm simply talking about the things in life that weren't 100% right. And then I realized that if I kept going down that road, it would lead me down to a path where I would truly hurt and injure myself. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. That is an abomination. Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. The altar call is open. I know that we don't have much room, but if the Lord led upon your heart, don't be shy. Come forward over here on the altar's floor. There's plenty of chairs over here, too. You can pray. And you can pray in your seat as well. However way the Lord led upon your heart. You can kneel next to your chair. You can pray in your seat. Or however way the Lord leads on your heart. Abomination. Stop making excuses for it. Stop trying to beat around the bush. Stop saying, well, I don't know. You just admitted it. I don't know. If you said, I don't know, you shouldn't even do it. That's sin. 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 That is an abomination. So many people will tell me to teach about this certain doctrine. You know why I don't do it? Sin. Look, maybe you know more Bible than me. If you want to be prideful and say that you know more than me and that I'm falling behind, fine. I don't care. Better to get myself uninjured without harm falling on me. But maybe that's why you yourself are falling into a lot of harm lately, huh? Because you had a lot of pride in you. And you taught something that you should have shut your mouth on. And hey, it's not just doctrine. It's everyday living. What about... Uh, Dropping behind, huh? What well, you're dropping behind in your duty. What about a certain dissension that you're involved with? With people in your home, your family, your friends, to your church? And guess what? Affects even people around you. What about your doings? Are you 100% right on what you're doing? What you see? What you hear? What you dress? even to the very food that you eat. What about your manners, your demeanor? Look, you got to realize this, is that you got to fix up your manners. And God, He wants good manners. That's what God wants, good manners out of your life. There's something in your life that you need to fix in your manners, you got to fix that. That's an abomination. We want to be perfect for the Lord. I think we... Always keep lowering our standards when God says, Be holy, for I am holy. God, my Father, I pray that today's preaching have been a blessing to the hearers, touched and changed their hearts. Dismiss us now with your blessing, and bless the next service we're going to have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age, at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. 
No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure. You could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.